All right, guys, we're going to gather up here, give a couple minutes as we get started. Um, so we are going to be talking about uh, taking your sales and marketing virtual uh, today. So I'll be sharing my screen here in a second, um, kind of talking through some of this uh, information. Um, I'm sure there are a bunch of questions. Um, so, and hopefully I'll be able to get to as many of these as possible. It's actually a pretty packed session. Um, so as you're coming in, uh, and even as I'm going through the presentation, uh, feel free to drop in uh, questions that you already have. Uh, maybe you kind of came in here uh, with certain expectations or, or things that you want to learn. Uh, go ahead and drop those uh, into the questions area. Go ahead and drop them into the chat area, whichever you prefer there. I will do my best. Uh, to sort of pay attention to both of those areas um, and be able to, to answer those. Um, in uh, Again, I don't want you to save them up to the end. I will try to cre create some opportunity at the end for uh, some specific questions, uh, but go ahead and drop them in there and I will do my best to kind of answer those uh, as they happen uh, where it's appropriate in the presentation. So, wow. Well. I'm just gonna be talking through things. I, I've got my sort of uh, outline here and I'm gonna share that in a second, but this isn't gonna be, um, this isn't going to be sort of PowerPoint slides. Um, I'm actually gonna definitely talk through some, some uh, very specific content, um, but there's gonna be all kinds of opportunity uh, for this to be uh, super interactive. So I'd love for you guys to, uh, to give me as many different questions as possible. We're gonna allow, we've got quite a few people registered, um, actually more than the hundred <laughs> that, uh, that I'm allowed to host on this. So hopefully uh, we'll get everybody in here. Um, one of the top questions that I get, and I'll go ahead and answer this, and, and I probably should go ahead and post it in the chat because I'll get asked about a thousand times. Elise, thank you. Uh, that's a great, uh, I appreciate it. Obviously you can hear me, you can see my video, you can see my home office. You know, we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, uh, if any of you guys are having any challenges with that, let me know. If you can hear me, go ahead and, and tell me in there. Um, this is what I wanna post. There uh, will be a replay and the presentation uh, set out after so um, so you'll definitely get a replay uh, you'll get a, a copy of, of the outline that I'll be displaying here in a little bit um, after this sometimes it takes me a day or two because um, I uh, get out of my home office on Friday um, and so but I will get that out to you uh, relatively quickly go ahead and as I said um, drop uh, any questions that you have uh, into the Q&A section um, and or the chat section, uh, and I will do my best to monitor both of those um, and get you, um, again, I'll cover it sort of uh, as it's relevant uh, in the presentation. Um, and then there will be, uh, hopefully, if, if I power through this well, uh, there will be some time at the end for uh, just kind of open Q&A. This is something that everybody's figuring out, even though we've, we've done uh, remote working as an agency for um, four years, um, there's still things to be figured out. There's still um, things that you guys are probably doing better than we're doing. So uh, this is a great one for just kind of open discussion. All right. I am gonna go full screen here. And then we're gonna go ahead and start. a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we're gonna jump right in here. Um, again, a um, couple quick things uh, right off the bat. Uh, there will be uh, a replay coming out to you and a copy of this document uh, will come out to you as well. Um, uh, so you can get all this. Uh, encourage you to take notes, but of course you don't need to, you can get all that stuff. Uh, I want you to, uh, as actively as possible, uh, give me questions um, and uh, submit um, 
those in the Q&A area or the chat, because uh, I'll be looking at that as well. Okay, so let's jump in. Uh, the whole concept here today um, is, is something that we're all trying to figure out uh, as a result of the coronavirus, the pandemic, uh, all the quarantines that happened. Um, and hopefully, for most of us, I'm, I'm outside of Detroit and Michigan, so we were one of the kind of epicenters of this. Um, even we uh, are beginning to sort of transition on the backside of that curve and starting to figure out how to reopen. Um, despite that, uh, I think, uh, and I think all of us would probably agree, um, this journey over the last several months um, has changed a lot of things. Um, we have uh, created a, a largely contactless uh, economy, and although all of us uh, are enthusiastic about getting back to some level of normalcy, um, most of our sales and marketing activities are probably going to be impacted um, and be required to figure out how to be virtual for the foreseeable future. Um, so I just want to take you through the, some of the elements of this, uh, depending on where you are kind of in this transition. Uh, and I, I'm curious, uh, and I'll actually kind of open this up for our kind of our uh, initial polling. Um, if you um, were remote uh, worker or, or did uh, what you do uh, remotely before, uh, go ahead and um, put in there uh, before uh, in the chat section. Uh, if this is a new thing to you, uh, remote working uh, and sales and marketing or taking your business virtual, uh, put new in there just to give me sort of a sense. Uh, but also make sure everybody's uh, good. It's been remote for a decade, so we'll probably ask you questions. New to this, Richard, Carlson, Michael, a lot of new people, Latomia. Um, Okay. Uh, Inez, wow, previously door to door, so you know. Uh, MK, snowstorms, uh, otherwise uh, new for daily. Okay, so again, it's got a little bit of variety, but it sounds like most of you are new uh, to this. So we're going to kind of start at the beginning. Um, and I'm really focused uh, a lot on the sales and marketing aspect of things, in particular the sales aspect of things. Um, and, and sort of the first thing that we need to do is, is we got to actually convert the team uh, to a remote situation. Um, and so everything starts uh, with that home, uh, quote unquote, office, right? Um, and there's a lot of information out there. You can, you can watch, uh, this is something that I love to do, just watch YouTube videos that kind of sees see all the different uh, work from home uh, sort of setups. Um, but really fundamentally, when you uh, convert into the office, especially if you think this, this is gonna be uh, your, sort of your foreseeable future, it's really important to get a few things right. Uh, we talk about kind of uh, balance and all these sorts of things, but the things that I really wanna focus on are really around these four elements that you have to get right in order for uh, work from home to truly have an office situation uh, work for you, uh, these are the four elements that are important, right? You have to have a consistent and conducive workspace, a place uh, that you go to uh, and that becomes the office when you're in that space. And we'll talk a little bit more about the details there. Uh, a consistent routine and rhythm. Um, there is something that was uh, so sort of um, uh, just kind of converted you or, or flipped the switch uh, when you went through your commute. Uh, so you kind of had a transition, right? You got up in the morning, you transitioned through that commute, your mind went into a different place, you showed up at a different space, uh, and so you had a, a natural routine and a rhythm. And as you commuted back home, you sort of wound down. Um, and again, working from home, there's all kinds of blurs in the routine and rhythm. Um, and so we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to get into software and tools. This is probably the most fun part about this. Uh, hopefully you guys will go ahead and ask some questions about tools and software. Um, you can definitely uh, get lost in this rabbit hole uh, for sure, but it is important because all of a sudden uh, you're replacing uh, sort of the infrastructure of an office building um, and all of the things that are in there. You're sort of filling the gaps with software and tools often, and so it's important to kind of get those right. Um, and one of the common uh, situations is that you can actually put more um, onus uh, on your process, on your organization by overlaying some maybe complex tool, overly complex tool, um, overly intrusive tools, 
um, just too many bells and whistles. Uh, so you can actually make your job harder um, by using some of these softwares and tools. So uh, that's important. Expectations and accountability. This is probably the most important. Um, so a lot of times we talk about communicating, but to me, it really comes down to what are the expectations? What is the accountability to make sure that I'm able to deliver uh, and perform well? Uh, and continue to meet the expectations of, of my role, uh, to continue to meet my sales quota, to con uh, continue to, to, to build the demand uh, if I'm in marketing. So let's talk about consistent and conducive workplace at first. Um, at the moment, um, a lot of this is probably in makeshift. Um, uh, some, some people uh, kind of throw into the chat, what, what's kind of the most creative uh, workspace here? Um, is it a couch? Is it a beanbag? Do you actually have a desk and chairs? I'd love to kind of hear um, what your, your uh, workspace looks like. Now, this is my recommendation is really, even if you're uh, in a small apartment, um, having to compete with the kids for space, um, uh, or, or you, you know, have a really big uh, house and you already have an office, um, there needs to be, even if it's just a corner of the kitchen or a corner of a room, uh, there needs to be sort of a, a designation uh, of the office. And there, uh, oftentimes, uh, if you have other people in the home, uh, which most of us do, whether it's kids or spouses um, or just roommates, uh, there needs to be sort of understanding of that office space um, and, and sort of some communication about, hey, I'm going to be doing a webinar during this piece period of time, so we need to kind of change our behavior a little bit. It's really important to kind of have those discussions. But ultimately, uh, in sort of the home office situation, uh, the definition of an office or the things that I recommend is simply uh, a clear work surface, right? You don't want to be on uh, the, the um, dining room table and competing with, you know, dishes from breakfast, right, or something else, but have an actual uh, place so where you have a, a clear and clean work surface. Um, if at all possible, get the, the very best uh, chair that you can find. Um, again, in this moment in time, you may not be able to, to necessarily uh, have a lot of options there, uh, but go through your house, find the, the very best uh, uh, chair. You have a big desk. Uh, and you've been doing it for a while. Uh, hopefully I pronounced this right, Alicia, I think. Um, so those of us who have been doing it for a while probably already have a, a nice desk and chair, um, but that I definitely, you're gonna be sitting in that chair. Uh, if you've got an opportunity to stand a little bit and work, uh, that's a good thing. Um, a few items that inspire and strengthen your focus. Um, so plants, you'll see some plants in the background. Um, I, I'm a, a fidgeter, uh, so I usually have some things. This actually uh, helps my focus, right? So I play with things as I'm thinking. Uh, so a few things around that kind of help you uh, stay focused. Um, I also have my AirPods, uh, so I'm kind of closing down. Um, I can go into a, a mode there, uh, even though I'm, I'm fortunate and have a home office, um, it gives me the opportunity to potentially kind of get uh, a little more intense uh, with having something like that. Uh, natural good lighting, uh, again, uh, especially if you're doing a lot of Zoom meetings, uh, webinars like this, uh, I have a window in front of me that gives me some natural light. Um, and so if, if you can do that, that's great. Uh, if not, if you're in the basement, um, you know, you potentially get a whole lot of lighting that, that will uh, sort of be natural light. So there's all kinds of, uh, of very uh, good lighting solutions. Encourage you to do that. It really helps with the energy. Um, we're going to spend all of our life for the foreseeable future on Zoom meetings. And so to have a, a conducive background for video calls. Uh, Zoom's great in that they have kind of the, the, the videos and sometimes those are, are fun uh, to put those video backdrops on there. Um, I've seen a lot of creative things and funny things that people are doing with them. Uh, and that works uh, again for just kind of fun uh, and to do occasionally. It's better if you have sort of a, a blank background uh, and you don't have a lot of things going on in there. Um, but ultimately, uh, if your job is sales, uh, if your job uh, specifically uh, is in marketing or if you're giving webinars or you're doing sales calls, uh, I really encourage you to have a, a true background uh, and figure out how you build that out and make it interesting because uh, it's also going to help you uh, sort of create a, an interest behind um, everything that's going on, right? Uh, delivering here, but you're actually, uh, as you look at my video screen, you're probably going to uh, spend a little bit of time uh, sort of looking behind me and, and curious as to what's on the wall. Um, I love to travel, and so those are um, those are actually um, uh, pictures of all the places that I've been, and so you can uh, hear some of that stuff. 
Um, but perfect example, you can see some of the distractions of sort of the home office. Um, apparently one of my children is printing out their homework on the printer. So we're gonna hear that in the background. Um, so hopefully that's not terribly distracting. Um, but yeah, the backdrop, virtual backdrops, Bob, that's a good a point. You can actually um, buy these really kind of interesting uh, physical backdrops uh, as much as possible. I think it's good um, to sort of make sure that you have a physical um, backdrop and a real backdrop. So let's take a peek. You can kind of see it because we're on here live. Um, but like I said, there's some common elements. I got some nice big monitors and screens here. Uh, you can see uh, I've got a couple little things that keep me focused and, and make some notes. Uh, I, like the, I love the plants. Uh, and then, of course, I, I've got a, a stack of, of, of books. I'm a big reader. Um, and so I spend a lot of time um, sort of uh, doing that. And so I've got my uh, reading. Um, so uh, again, having all those kind of things uh, sort of at your uh, disposal. Another big thing is the consistent uh, routine and rhythm. Um, working from home, um, obviously there's all kinds of distractions. There's people um, that are doing things in the house. Um, there are people that are uh, printing off uh, homework packets. Uh, there's dogs. Um, there's all sorts of, of things like that. And so being able to uh, kind of share and get a regular routine. Um, oftentimes, uh, the first thing that people will try to do uh, when they start to work from home is actually uh, try to replicate uh, what their work routine was. And so, hey, I, you know, I get at work, I kind of set up what I'm doing, I open up my initial projects, maybe work some email, and then I go off to the water cooler and, uh, and, and, and do something in the office kitchen, and then maybe I go and meet with these people. Um, and so there may be something to start with of just kind of replicating um, that sort of typical work environment. Um, but uh, I think what you're going to find out in those uh, who have worked from home for a while, um, and I'd love to hear you kind of uh, chime in on this, um, oftentimes our routine um, changes. It's, it's not the same as what it was in the physical office environment. I know mine has changed. Um, I used to get up in the morning, uh, I would take the kids to school, and I would go to the gym, uh, and then I'd come home from the gym, and I would... Um, then kind of get into my work day, uh, then I would work. Sometimes I would go out and, and uh, visit a client or maybe go to lunch with, with somebody, and then I would come back and do some work, and then at you know, five o'clock or so, then I would head home uh, and kind of end my day. But actually, as I've been working from home, now that shifted a little bit. I actually get up uh, at the same time, really early, actually, uh, about six o'clock. Um, I hop in, I start doing some writing, some content creation, uh, some of the, the funner, bigger activities, um, maybe work through some, uh, some client requirements or whatever. Um, then I take a, a break um, uh, closer to eight or nine. Uh, that's when I do my home workout because that, all that's changed because uh, people are up and, and, and the, the gym space is available. Um, and so then I kind of go through that. Then I jump back into work. Um, I usually spend some time around lunchtime, um, checking in on the kids, seeing you know, what they're doing with homework, uh, visit with my spouse. Maybe we do lunch uh, together. Um, and then uh, I'll work uh, maybe to a little earlier uh, in the day. Maybe I cut out uh, around three or four, uh, do some things around kind of dinner time, and then actually go back um, and do another hour or so, uh, just sort of cleaning things up and getting prepared for the next day. And so that routine, since I'm actually available to the office, has changed significantly. So with any given work day, I'm actually spending less time um, specifically um, sort of concentrated inside of, uh, of that work day. And I'm kind of breaking it up a little bit more and, and spending a little more uh, time in different spaces where I have a little more energy um, and that sort of um, tends to work out uh, better because I have access to my office and I've taken out that commute time. Uh, yeah, do not disturb side from the door. Did you see my daughter come and get her homework? So, um, yeah, no, Bob, you, uh, you've worked out all the kinks for sure. Um, any other challenges that you guys have, before we get into the kind of the software and the tools, um, are there any challenges specifically that you guys are running into as you work from home? Uh, go ahead and drop those in the chat. Maybe we'll talk about those for a little bit before we get, kind of get into uh, some tools. No challenges? There's some cool things out there too um, that, uh, that we've played with a little bit. I don't know if you've heard of CRISP. 
If you've got dogs that bark in the background or your neighbor decided to mow their grass in the middle of the day because they're home and they don't uh, have anything to do, um, this is a nice little plugin uh, as we start to talk about tools. Uh, it's supposed to kind of mute out the background noise. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious um, uh, to see how well this worked because this may have worked for me. You heard me mention that the printer was printing out uh, my kid's uh, homework packet. Did you guys hear the printer or did this actually take out that noise? Didn't hear it at all. Okay. So that was a perfect example of how this worked. Oh, nice. Aha, excellent. So I was the one that was stressed. That's awesome. So this is probably a really good tool. Um, so this is crisp. Uh, it's free. Um, and you could just, uh, I think it's crisp.com. I just found out about it today and installed it. So that worked out nicely. Um, and again, you install it, uh, you can tell it what apps. Uh, so in this case, it's zoom, uh, and it's filtering out the background noise. Ah, so headsets. Um, so I use um, a couple of different things. I use uh, AirPods. Uh, these are the noise canceling ones, uh, which is nice. Um, my house is relatively kind of under control because all my kids are like teenagers and two older ones are, are college age. So uh, I don't have the little ones running around. Uh, and uh, my dogs don't necessarily uh, kind of get, but sometimes it's good to really focus in. Um, I also have uh, these, when I want to get uh, even more intense, um, and so uh, they're the Sony. Um, I, it's like they've got the most horrible naming conventions, like WFH something. Uh, so I like that. Um, when I'm on conference calls and doing webinars like this, um, I can't. If you're if you're in sales, which I do all the business development, uh, most of the business development for our agency, um, I can't recommend uh, this enough. Uh, so this is uh, Jabra. Uh, USB uh, conference. Um, can you guys still see the video of me in addition to the presentation? This kind of because um, I'm showing this this Jabra. It's an actual conference speaker, um, and that's what you're hearing me talk through right now. Um, and it's really it acts just like a conference speaker, so you don't have to hold things. Uh, the Bluetooth sometimes uh, you you kind of get that latency. You don't get any latency with this. They get a nice clean uh, presentation. Um, you can move it around, you can plug it into a laptop if you want to move to a different position. Uh, you also don't get the, um, the echoing that so many people get because uh, especially MacBooks are famous for this. Um, they'll pick up the sound that's coming through the speaker and, and they feed it back through so you get that background noise. Uh, this takes all of that out. So um, thanks Susan, thanks uh, Bob. And yeah, so, and this is super, I, I don't think these are very expensive. I, I got this a long time ago, but I, I think this is, it's definitely less than a hundred bucks. So, um, so that's definitely, if you're in sales, uh, I kick up a sales call and do everything through that. Um, yeah, uh, spell the name. So it's J A B R A. I'll actually dump it in here. All right. Um, yeah. And it's, uh, I think if you search Amazon, uh, that name and conference speaker and you'll, um, you'll get that all in there. Okay, these are great questions. Feel free to jump in here. So when we're talking about uh, software and tools, um, one of the things uh, I like to kind of think of them in different kind of sections. Uh, the first thing that you have to do, especially if you've just been kicked out um, recently uh, into remote working and you haven't done this in the past, you, the first thing you gotta do is get your team all uh, on the same, uh, there's a couple of different models. This one's probably old, uh, Bob. Um, I'm an old man, I got a few glasses now. This is a brand new thing for me, by the way. Um, it's a model, again, this is probably an old model. They probably have a newer version, but it's model PHS002W, uh, Jabra. So, um, so the first step is getting that team connected. Um, so we use Slack. Uh, it's kind of become the default uh, winner in this space. There are some other solutions, but uh, it's pretty ubiquitous. Um, it has also become very useful to us um, because we've been able to connect clients in it because it is so ubiquitous. Uh, the clients that you work with, or if you're in sales uh, and you need to, to uh, do account management, there's a good chance that you can actually connect in uh, with that client and you can have them in Slack and it does a really nice way of connecting them, allowing you to interact back and forth 
you're aware that the client's there. Um, so it gives you that kind of real-time communication. That can be a distraction uh, for some people, and so maybe you won't find that a good idea. Um, I find it very useful uh, because I want to be uh, available. The other thing that's really neat about being in Slack uh, is there are so many communities out there. I know Facebook groups were kind of a big thing. Uh, really, everything's transitioned to Slack communities. Um, I'm in all kinds of communities of sales professional, marketing professionals, uh, executives, and, and, and other uh, owners of businesses and stuff. And I get so much networking done inside of those Slack communities. Um, that's super helpful. Um, so I can go in there, I can ask questions, I can collaborate, uh, even do some sales activities in there. Um, so Slack is good uh, for a lot of different uh, facets of organizing your team, uh, being in the communities that are out there. Um, and we're gonna talk about this one because it kind of fits a little bit different, but another great way to connect your team, especially if you um, kind of uh, are overwhelmed by sort of the instant uh, availability of chat, uh, Basecamp has a really good structure. structure. Um, they kind of uh, subscribe to the calm philosophy, the asynchronous approach. Um, they have some functionality uh, to share, to chat, to interact uh, with teams with inside of uh, Basecamp. So that's a really good tool for team connectivity and collaboration. Um, and then uh, it goes without saying that Zoom is a requirement. Um, so this ability to do video. Uh, I do one-on-ones with team members. I work collaboratively with team members when we're on projects. Uh, we can share our screens. We can work together. We can work in one-on-one -on -one groups. We can work in uh, the whole team coming together. We do our stand-up via Zoom. Uh, the other opportunity here, um, and this is just brand new, um, is uh, the Google Meeting. Uh, and, and, and I've done some testing on this already. They, they've offered it for free. If you're on Google Apps, it probably almost makes more sense in some ways uh, because it is free uh, because of what they've done uh, through the, you know, everything that's happened with COVID. They've made it free. Uh, seems to work just as good, right? Uh, again, you can collaborate. You can share. Uh, it's one click on, on you know, your Google Apps email client, start a meeting, join a meeting. Um, and so I would really uh, encourage you to check that out if you want a free solution. Um, the other thing nice about Basecamp, if you're a single uh, sort of producer, uh, Basecamp's free as well. It's free up to a, it's a lot of limitations for Slack uh, in the free version, and it's not terribly expensive. So, it is. project management. Um, we use Notion. Um, uh, so, I would not necessarily, if you're new to this remote working thing, uh, I would not start here. We've migrated through a couple of these tools and we've ended up with Notion because we, we have some specific processes and we have some specific systems on how we collaborate. Notion is kind of like a Swiss Army knife. It lets us build out those. Um, so it has a kind of infinite flexibility or a lot of flexibility, um, it databases things. Um, so it's great if you really know the process and system you want to build, uh, but it does take some work. Uh, there's nothing sort of you know in there by default. There's some templates and stuff, but um, but that's probably not the place to start. Now, if I was going to start over um, and just kind of get a project management system that would work for me um, in this moment where we've kind of been thrown into remote work uh, and need to collaborate, need to collaborate in a good way, need to have some structure, uh, I would definitely choose Basecamp um, uh, for a couple reasons. One, I, I just like the tool. Uh, we've used it for years um, and just recently kind of transitioned out of it. But because they are a remote company, uh, they actually use it themselves. And so they've figured out a lot of kind of the right ways to work. Uh, so there's some nice guardrails uh, in there for someone who's just starting out. Uh, if you're just trying to track tasks and move things uh, through different checkpoints, uh, uh, Trilio is good in that regard. Uh, it's just, it uses the, the concept of the Kanban board. And so you're just putting little you know, task on there and you're just progressing them uh, through to completion. And so that's a nice little setup. Asana is more of a, a kind of a generalized project management tool, uh, probably one of the bigger ones out there. Uh, I feel like it's a little bit uh, too much work um, to put all the stuff in there and, and whatnot. So um, it's a little, little heavier weight than, than I like. Um, any questions on uh, project management? I'm curious, what kind of project management tools are you guys using? Or are you using anything at all? Um, another common one here, um, and again, I, I kind of talk about this is, uh, we're gonna talk about sales, but Airtable is pretty popular. It's kind of like a juiced up spreadsheet. 
Um, it's got a free version to do most everything, uh, but it's a great way to kind of keep track of, uh, of different tasks. Uh, if you're in uh, the sales role, uh, it's kind of a, uh, a lightweight CRM, uh, but it has some more flexibility than just a straight spreadsheet. Um, okay. Um, video conferencing, I, I just, I can't overstate this enough. Video conferencing is just a mainstay. You need to practice. Uh, if you're in sales, if you're in marketing, you have to get comfortable uh, in front of the video camera. You have to be prepared each and every day uh, to be a part of, of Zoom calls. Um, a lot of things that we used to do across the kitchen, to, you know, if you're, I know a lot of you are in insurance sales or financial services sales, mortgage sales, uh, I have a lot of salespeople on this particular call. Um, you know, stuff that we used to do, uh, you know, across the, the dining room table um, now needs to happen like this, one-on-one uh, -on -one in a video setting. So you need to start practicing and get comfortable, uh, even in a more general uh, BDR uh, or uh, CDR role. Um, on the websites, you're going to see less of this kind of conference call or sort of chasing down prospects. I think you're going to see a lot of this kind of just quickly spinning up a Zoom meeting uh, and having your interaction like this. Uh, even now, we're going to talk about some kind of setting up sales calls and then stuff. Um, this is the expectation that we're going to do a Zoom meeting. Uh, it's become a verb, just like Googling something. Hey, let's get on a Zoom, right? Um, and so that's a, a real thing. <laughs> Pen and paper. I have that backup system here uh, as well. So uh, I love the good old legal pad. You can see I go through them pretty quickly. Uh, so yeah, we need a lot of pen and paper as well. Um, last thing before we kind of leave this, this whole sort of remote uh, sales and office environment is really setting up expectations and accountability for your system, uh, for your, your, your team and for yourself uh, in this moment. Uh, clarity is crucial to a high performance team. Uh, everybody knowing what their role is, uh, what they're responsible for, what the expectations on their delivery is and the performance uh, over communicating uh, is a big part of this. That's why Slack's important. That's why Basecamp, uh, these tools are important so that you can over communicate. You can document things. Uh, writing becomes an even more crucial skill. Uh, as you're you know, putting things out there, you need to clearly communicate in writing generally. Uh, we can actually emphasize and, and kind of put the finer point and nuance uh, with video calls like this. Uh, but ultimately, most of your day is going to be spent uh, writing with clarity uh, and writing and communicating over and over again about the same thing. So one of the things that I can't emphasize enough, at the point in time that you think that you're being annoying uh, in, in sort of over communicating is probably the point at which people, it's actually registering to people because there's all kinds of different distractions. So don't um, be shy about saying the same thing over and over again. Uh, clear expectations and accountability, big part creating clarity. Um, so oftentimes we kind of go through, you know what, what you know, how you do your job, the process you go through, the systems that you use, and the expectation you have on your performance. Uh, but if you're managing other people, uh, there's a good chance that they don't really understand all of those things unless you are communicating it to them. So have very direct conversations. Uh, if you're going to continue as a remote team, uh, the one-on-one -on -one becomes even more critical. Uh, the check-in, the touch base, the, the, the stand-ups, all those little points of communication become more and more crucial. And you should probably up the frequency, at least initially, on those uh, so that you can talk very specifically about situations, things that are going on, uh, so that over time, uh, through those interactions, uh, people will become more and more aware of what the expectations and what the accountability factor is. When you're in an office, a lot of times you just sort of detect that, right? You watch other people work, you see what's kind of the standard in the workplace, what's acceptable, what's not, and you can kind of visually pick that up. Um, but that's um, something when you go remote, uh, has to be uh, sort of reduced down to writing um, or one-on-ones. Uh, jive. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Getting your phone system in order is, is a huge thing. Um, go to meeting for webinars. Um, yeah. So this is, is good. Lead management system. Great input, Jonathan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Figuring out what all these little pieces are. So making sure you have a phone system. Uh, we use uh, Grasshopper. We're actually thinking about using uh, Zoom phone. Um, just because it's, it's tighter integrated with some of the stuff that we use. Uh, but figuring out what that virtual PBX is, especially if you've got a larger organization, that becomes important as you go remote. Uh, figuring out where you're going to uh, store your leads, what that CRM looks like, how all that stuff uh, hooks up. Text messaging is huge. Email marketing, we're going to actually talk about some of that stuff. So let me keep pushing through here. Because um, i got to watch our time because there's a lot of stuff packed in here. 
Okay, let's now talk specifically about the sales activity. I think best, the best kind of first place to start is really um, just like we did when we went from the physical traditional office space to the remote office, it, it's kind of useful to look at what we had before and maybe what we're trying to replicate or get really close to, or maybe even improve on. So that's kind of what I've done here is let's try to do sort of a best match exercise, some of the things that we traditionally did in sales, right? Um, and see what the equivalent in the virtual world is. So face-to-face -face networking, um, this is a big part of what we did. Um, and even though we did a lot of phone calls and outreach and you spend a lot of time on the phone uh, as a salesperson, uh, ultimately we always try to end up in a face-to-face -face, uh, sort of situation. Um, so that's transitioned a little bit. I think that the goal is the same. The goal is to at some point to have a face-to-face -face interaction. Again, proposing Zoom uh, or, or Google Meeting, like I said, everybody has that expectation. Um, but in order to get to that one-to-one, face-to-face uh, sort of interaction, uh, you can't rely on networking events. You can't rely on conferences as much. Uh, so you have to do uh, that a little bit different. I think all of us have to up our LinkedIn game, even if you're direct to consumer, um, building up that network of other sales professionals, other people that you can partner with is super important on LinkedIn uh, specifically. Uh, all of the activity has, has kind of upped, uh, some of the bad, uh, uh, but a lot of the good. Um, the thing here in LinkedIn, I think, is the most powerful. A lot of people like to do the messages. They got some automation, which is kind of annoying, and they connect to people and that sort of thing. Uh, but what I've actually seen that's the most effective is actually putting out content on LinkedIn and actively commenting uh, on those people that I want to connect with. So uh, it's easy enough to follow people or pay attention to people or just to look to who's interesting in your stream and actively participating in those conversations uh, will build you uh, relationships and networks much faster uh, than sending in uh, connect requests. Uh, obviously, there's a place for that. Um, but oftentimes, uh, if I want to connect with somebody, uh, I want to have already established communication. Maybe I've run into them in my sales process. Um, or I'm actively uh, seeing that they have or they're producing some value in the LinkedIn stream uh, and I've actively commented on them. And then when I send out a, a connect, uh, it's personal um, and I get a good connection. It's actually somebody that I'm going to work with. Um, port that networking into Facebook if you're in the B2C space. Now, a lot of the networking you did could be ported in or, or could be sort of reproduced uh, in Facebook. So obviously the groups um, are still a big thing. Uh, there are communities to kind of get involved with. Uh, a lot of times there are Facebook groups around the communities um, that you want to approach. You know, there's uh, closed groups around uh, church groups, around individual neighborhoods and communities, encourage you to get involved and contribute into those groups. Join them, um, and and even kind of the traditional networking groups, uh, maybe the Chamber of Commerce and the places that you met before, some of the community service organizations. Uh, they usually have a Facebook equivalent of that group, so you can take a lot of that networking uh, and go online to get it included inside of the Facebook groups. Um, inside, of, if you have a Facebook page, which I encourage uh, you to to have for your business. Um, just you know, kicking up a Facebook Live and actually going live out there. People are going to become aware of that. Uh, and again, uh, depending on what business, if you're in insurance or mortgage, uh, just informing people uh, of the different uh, things that you know uh, and they should be thinking about if they're thinking about buying a house or they're thinking about life insurance or they've just got questions about what does COVID uh, mean for, for my insurance or something like that. So all kinds of those little point topics uh, where you can essentially do kind of like mini uh, little webinars like we're doing now, uh, but do it for very specific things and kind of in short burst. Um, Facebook Live is a great opportunity to, to build out a network. YouTube, uh, same sort of thing. Uh, how-to videos, very specific how-tos, very specific questions. Oftentimes, this is a great search engine option. Uh, you can start out a YouTube channel and you actually start to get, uh, actually uh, show up in the, the, the results. So even if you don't have a website, people can become aware of you. There's some ways that you can use text messaging with this, uh, maybe show a phone number um, and have them call you, sort of the traditional sort of info commercial. Um, but you'll be amazed at how many people, if you put a, a, a text number or a phone number, um, that they'll uh, text uh, so there's a lot of people that are kind of doing this, influencers that are doing this, uh, but the, offering that text opportunity, your videos can get you some inbound calls for sure. 
webinars, uh, hosting those much like you did uh, physical uh, and in-place or in-person seminars. Webinars work the same thing. Uh, you're showing credibility, you're showing expertise, and as a result of that, uh, people are connecting uh, with you as well. Um, and uh, again, that builds out that network, builds out that, that opportunity, that book of business that you can work uh, through. Conferences and trade shows. Uh, a lot of us uh, spend a lot of time at conferences, either as speakers or just as attendees. Uh, great way to meet a lot of people, have good uh, conversations. Uh, those haven't gone away. Uh, so it's important for you to take a look at the virtual versions of these. Uh, and the ones that I've encountered so far, and some of the ones that I've spoke at, um, have actually been better than the physical conference. One, I didn't have to do all the travel, uh, which takes an inordinate amount of time out. Uh, in order to do that. Uh, I do miss the stage uh, for sure, uh, but in a lot of ways, the virtual conference is uh, better. Um, so uh, for one, uh, people are usually a, a little more intensely focused uh, than they might be in the crowd. Uh, at a lot of the conferences, uh, everybody was out in the hallways and they weren't actually in all of the sessions or they had to, to choose between sessions. So a lot of the virtual ones, they don't have to make those choices. Um, and so they're there only uh, to hear you speak. Um, and so you get 100% participation uh, in the speaking part of that. Uh, if you're an attendee, um, you have the replays. Um, so you can have the whole uh, conference um, available to you, even though you might miss a session or maybe there's something going on at work and you can't attend, um, you can get the replays. Just like here, we had you know almost 200 people sign up for this, only 100 could get in. All of them are gonna get the replay. Um, so there's some advantages uh, to the virtual uh, version of this. Uh, the other thing is a lot of the apps allow you to network with the attendees more efficiently, whereas before a lot of times those lists weren't available, but a lot of times with the virtual version, uh, those lists are readily available and you can do some list building uh, with the attendees themselves. Um, and so uh, a lot more opportunity. If you're a vendor or a sponsor, um, I think it's a lot more valuable to you because people can't scoot around uh, the vendor booth, so they can't avoid the exhibit area. Um, they're going to, if you're sponsoring a, a virtual conference, they're going to talk about you uh, sort of from the stage or from the video screen. Uh, they're going to give you a lot more visibility than you could probably have at a more traditional conference or uh, trade show. Um, and just producing your own, becoming your own virtual conference is a great way to gather an audience around your community. Uh, even if you're uh, an insurance agent, um, by offering webinars or Facebook Live, you can pull in and essentially sell to 20 or 30 people in your community, whereas before you have to kind of reach out to them individually. And you will be surprised if you light up a Facebook Live, uh, how many people from your community uh, will become aware of you, will come in there, um, and just in the course of just sort of flipping through uh, their Facebook, will actually tune in. Um, so again, there's a lot of advantages uh, to kind of the virtual version uh, of that uh, sort of large group sale, if you will. Um, visiting prospects and clients on site. This is probably one of the things that's the hardest, whining and dining folks and everything. Um, I think um, that again, that there are ways to uh, create uh, almost better uh, environments. So a lot of times to come into someone's home or to meet them face to face, uh, again, there's some commuting, there's some, some extra level of trust um, to kind of get that physical interaction or to coordinate and schedule something like that. So a lot of times those things didn't happen as often and frequently as they can now. So with the virtual uh, sort of check-in, uh, text messaging, or you know, meeting on a Zoom, setting up a, kind of a call, all those things can be a lot more efficient because they don't actually have to travel. To get on a Zoom call, I don't have to travel to a restaurant, sit down, order. Uh, I mean, again, there's a lot to be taken away from kind of just the small talk, but, but you can, um, to a large degree, uh, I've spent a lot more time on Zoom, caught up with a lot of old um, sort of contacts and everything uh, by the Zoom because people just are, are seemingly more available uh, currently and just getting more familiar with this. In a lot of ways, it's a lot more efficient. So make sure you're doing regular check-ins, you're setting up text messaging campaigns and email routines. Uh, again, this is something that you can uh, use automation uh, to support you. Um, I've got a tool that I've been using, encourage you to check out, um, is call action. Uh, and so again, uh, it's essentially uh, an ability for you to kind of reach out via, you know, calls and text messages um, and, and build campaigns uh, in here. Just super, super um, kind of uh, 
way to just automate uh, those those check-ins. And then when things come back, when people pay attention, um, then then that's when you can engage. And you can manage all of that, multiple text message that's in, inside of there. Um, there's some other ones uh, as well. I, I highlight that. I don't get anything from it, uh, but it is a friend of mine uh, who kind of leads that company. And, and again, it's what we use. Um, design systems that just regularly uh, ping prospects and clients and, and how they're doing, what they're focused on, um, and those sorts of things. Um, just setting up those automations so that you, again, can work across a large number of individuals um, very effectively and efficiently. You essentially build out the conversation, build out the check-ins, uh, let that run in the background. Uh, and then when somebody comes alive or wants to schedule a meeting uh, or actually wants to pop on a quick Zoom, they'll let you know. And those are the ones that you're actually spending your day on. Uh, one of the things that I like to say is that uh, no salesperson ever burnt out uh, on actually talking to clients and people uh, all day long. Right? That's what we love to do. Uh, what we burn out on is the repetitive task of following up, making a lot of phone calls and not getting a lot of responses, sending out a lot of emails and not getting a lot of responses. You can allow automation to kind of do all of those things. Um, and then you actually spend your time face to face on a Zoom call or on a phone call interacting with clients when they respond uh, to this automation. Uh, getting comfortable just quickly spinning up a Zoom meeting uh, is super important. Just having that there, uh, ready to just send out and say, hey, um, you know, this is, um, uh, you know, this is how you can get a hold of me. Just click this link, making it super simple, knowing how to get that up. Virtual wine. Yeah, so that's my last thing on here. Um, so uh, having uh, office hours, having uh, happy hours. Um, draws in an audience. So you can have these virtual happy hours. Um, I know uh, we're even getting together with friends. People are just getting used to having kind of these social uh, events online. Um, and so the wine and dining part, um, you can do it virtually, but also don't, um, don't miss the opportunity to sort of listen uh, as to what they talk about, what they're interested in, and those sorts of things. And go ahead, uh, and if you uh, have their information, uh, send them uh, a thoughtful gift to their home. Uh, that includes wine depending on what your preference is and what you're allowed to do uh, with your office environment. But really, uh, importantly, uh, listen, take good notes in your CRM, who they are. Uh, the other thing that I found really powerful during this time, because we all are in the home office, we all are around our families or we're concerned about our families, there's a lot more sort of personal information uh, on complete strangers that I'm having call, sales calls with that I'm getting and all that's going into the notes in my CRM. So um, unlike a lot of other uh, sort of times and periods of time, there's a lot of personal interaction and information and sort of more open, transparent conversations about what's important in our lives, uh, the mixing of personal and professional. Um, all of that is excellent uh, way to, to build out uh, your database uh, and to really understand your clients better and to be more empathetic uh, and more in tune uh, with your clients. So um, I definitely um, encourage you to take note of that and, and use those notes. Here's the big one uh, that I think is probably something that is the most powerful thing that you can do. So if you manage your own website, there's a, there's um, and this is something we're experimenting with, the, kind of the traditional way things work. You fill out a web form or somebody does an email to you and they say, hey, I'm interested uh, in talking to you. I'm interested in life insurance. I'm interested in uh, getting a mortgage quote and that. And then the, the great chase uh, ensues, right? And you have to chase them down. But they were, they were already interested. Um, so by using some, some tools like Calendly is the one I use, if you're on a website or even if you're just sending out an initial email or even a text message, um, cut all of that chase uh, out of the mix. Don't ask them, hey, when are you available? Instead, text them and say, hey, when you're available, just set up a time in my calendar. And they just click that link, they pick a time that's available, and then all of a sudden, you get a booked appointment in your calendar, automatically we'll hook up the Zoom. All this can be wired together. It'll we'll automatically uh, hook up a Zoom meeting and send that out, um, and it's all set up. They get an appointment in your calendar, you get an appointment in your calendar, there's a link for both of you to click, boom, you're on a Zoom meeting, you're doing a face-to-face -face sales call. Um, so can't emphasize enough, uh, linking together that calendaring solution, uh, making it hooked together with a video solution, uh, and using that uh, as your uh, drip campaign, whether it's text or email, making that whole process uh, sit within uh, that campaign. 
And this is really what it is. The, the, the main CTA is like, hey, schedule an appointment, schedule a free consultation, uh, schedule a discovery session with me. All you got to do is, you know, it, it's driven by you. That's the other nice thing. You can, uh, with a tool like Calendly, you can set up places in your calendar that are available. And so you can also protect your time. But then they get a whole list of options. So you're not going back and forth in email trying to kind of set up the best option or coordinate in a team or whatever. They just pick whatever's convenient for them. It lands in your calendar in a block. Uh, that you've already said is acceptable uh, and everything works uh, for everyone. There's nothing worse than a salesperson saying, hey, um, I want to meet with you at three o'clock and, and the actual customer is like, well, I, three o'clock doesn't work. And so what do they do? Uh, they didn't work uh, hard to kind of reconcile that. But again, Calendly is an excellent solution. There's some others like it. Anybody else using um, calendaring solutions to, to set up and kind of streamline uh, appointments? I'd love to hear other solutions. I know there's some others out there. All right, for the last 10 minutes, we're gonna kind of dig into this uh, pretty deeply. This is what a lot of you are probably super interested in. Um, so sales tactics and tools that you should be using in a virtual environment. Um, Oh, Davia. Okay, great. This is, uh, you're on the right place. Uh, that's okay. Most of these things, uh, so Davia is saying, hey, it's all new to me, not tech savvy at all. Um, most of these things don't require a lot of technical knowledge. They're getting them to be simpler and simpler and simpler. Um, and oftentimes, uh, I just recommend just like take out one pain point first. Um, and then from there, um, uh, you know, you can, you can enlarge the system, if you will. Um, but, you know, just take one of these things at a time. So a couple things that you need to be doing uh, in this contactless world uh, that's more important than ever, list building, uh, whether that's through LinkedIn, uh, whether that's through, uh, you know, acquisition of emails, um, you can do that through your website. Um, but all these list building activities, there's all kinds of different ways to build out your database. But the database itself is the most powerful tool for sustaining uh, your business, sustaining your sales uh, quotas, your revenue uh, and performance uh, expectation. It's all about having that database. And so you need to be constantly uh, in a list building mode. And there's a lot of tools that can help you to acquire that contact information. And then it's on you to build campaigns that feel natural and normal and organic uh, to really kind of deliver a good experience. But you need to be building uh, on that list. The other thing, uh, this works better in B2C for sure, uh, but if you are in the B2C, I know we've got a lot of insurance, mortgage, uh, maybe some solar folks in here. Uh, in those categories, uh, even in, in, in my own category as an agency or B2B, this works to some degree. Taking that list of emails, uh, putting them inside of Facebook, creating the custom audience for them. And as you're trying to make phone calls, do text messages, do email outreach to them, um, you're running Facebook ads against that custom audience. So they're starting to get brand awareness and now they're hearing your voice or they're seeing an email. And that just naturally works together to quicken um, the credibility and trust that's gained. So uh, those custom uh, Facebook audiences uh, are super important. Highly targeted Google ads, this kind of works in the same way. Um, make sure that even if you're not doing um, any other types of Google ads, you, know, you should be, since it be a, a very, very small spend, you should be advertising uh, on your brand or potentially your name if you're an insurance agent or a loan officer. Uh, and then everybody that hits your uh, website, if you have a website, uh, remarketing to them. But at the very least, when they type in your name or they type in your brand, they should be able to find you in Google ads. So at least be doing that. They'll cost you less than a few hundred bucks a month to do that uh, and make sure that when they search, because they will for your name or your company, they're going to find you. Email drip campaigns, this just goes back to automating. Uh, you have to be doing email. Um, again, uh, text messaging is probably a better, it's kind of the, the new version of email uh, in list building, but um, even with text messaging, you should be doing some basic email. Uh, just keep in contact, keep some response, be able to deliver some valuable content to them. Uh, again, you don't have to be overly fancy. Some of us have websites and blogs and case studies and all that sort of thing, but it can be just 
uh, you know, content in an email drip can be just something as simple as a couple of lines uh, of text. It's just like, hey, this is something that's happening in insurance that you should know about. Hey, we're in Michigan. Uh, they just, uh, you know, changed the no fault. And so you should know about that. Contact me uh, if you want to understand more. So that can be the valuable content. It doesn't have to be a really long thing. Uh, if you're good at producing content, um, or you just send them links to articles that you've read that are sort of uh, help inform them. Um, just figure out a way to kind of get that out and email's a great delivery for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I think, uh, uh, Rolando, there, there's definitely something to that, that there are so many emails coming out, uh, but there, we're still having uh, a lot of success uh, with email. I don't think you take it away. Um, one of the things that can be different is I think a lot of people are uh, pushing in emails uh, and they're, they're so focused on kind of what's going on or trying to have some unique way that they're approaching coronavirus and instead kind of coming in there uh, with a, a more relevant message or something more specific to what they might be dealing with. Um, I think, you know, every time somebody puts, you know, COVID or coronavirus in my inbox, you're probably getting a lot of that. I'm just getting rid of it. Nobody wants to know how you're responding to COVID. Um, and so there's, uh, there's a lot of that going on, but there's definitely a place for email, uh, for sure. If you want to pause it for a little bit uh, during this time, you know, that's fine too. But, uh, for the most part, um, it still seems to be effective in, in what we're doing. Um, videos or opportunities of video by email. Uh, yeah, I see a little bit of that, uh, for sure, especially content, uh, that definitely gets an opening. So Bob, that's a, that's a good one. So a lot of times when I send out an email, uh, there will be a, you know, a video or an opportunity to click through to a video. Um, again, it lets people know who you are. I'm a huge fan of video. Text messaging uh, is probably one of the most effective, uh, particularly if you're in the uh, business to consumer side of things. Ringless voicemails. Uh, again, I'm not your legal counsel. I'm not your compliance person. Uh, there are some things around text messaging and, and voicemail drops. Um, that are important for you to know. Uh, so don't ask me whether or not you can uh, do it. The disclaimer that I always give is don't ask me those questions. Ask your legal counsel, your general counsel, or your compliance officer, uh, because each and every one of your businesses are unique. Um, and so I can't advise on that. I'm just trying to make you aware of some things that are out there and that are being used in the, the market. Um, where the ringless voicemail uh, drop fits in uh, is those who have, us who have done lots of calls know that uh, you know, 80, 90% of those calls go unanswered. Uh, so the voicemail uh, drop allows you uh, to sort of automate the leaving of voicemail. I'm a big proponent of leaving voicemails and talking to them, letting them hear your voice, potentially just be able to, to read your value proposition uh, or know that you're, you know, a lot of them have requested, well, actually all of them that you're contacted have requested some information, especially in the B2C uh, C space. So it's good to let them know that, hey, I'm trying to respond to the requests that you've made. Uh, so that's kind of the, the place that that fits. Um, <laughs> uh, I like that, Bob. Um, active content creation and community participation. So again, um, out there on the web, uh, contributing into those communities, contributing into those conversations, building content, um, again, just a core part of what you should be doing uh, that's getting more responsive. That will also get your emails open more if you're, again, putting valuable content in there and you're adding value back. Um, what's in the sales toolbox? Uh, kind of wrap around this. Um, here are some of the tools that, uh, that I use or have used. Uh, call action is something I'm a big fan of. Uh, again, uh, intelligent lead automation, you're putting lists in there or you're acquiring uh, people that are calling into you um, and then you're able to very uh, quickly in an automated fashion uh, with one touch of that lead uh, started on a campaign and then you're only responding to active responses. It allows you to do text messaging, ringless voicemail drops, you can actually do calling through it uh, in email as well. If you're looking for a more general um, sort of CRM solution, uh, I've, I've used uh, both Close and Nutshell, um, and both of them are excellent for uh, sort of that traditional CRM uh, solution. Uh, Close I liked more when I was doing calling. It's got a, uh, a progressive dialer in it that you can uh, use. Uh, Nutshell I like is just kind of a general CRM solution. It's really good at building out workflows. Um, if you have a particular uh, sales process or workflow that you need to, to map out, it gives you a lot of opportunity to kind of map that flow specific to your business. Mailshake, 
is what I, I, I love and use for drip email campaigns, super effective. Uh, hooks into your Gmail uh, or Google Apps uh, account. So super effective to kind of integrate everything together. MailChimp is what I live by on long-term uh, lead nurturing campaigns. So when I put people into automation uh, and want to work um, usually content-based educational emails over a long series of time, uh, I love using MailChimp. Uh, there's a couple little point solutions here, but reply.io has a great, um, it, it's a, a an email sort of uh, campaigning tool, but it's got a Great little feature, a little plugin that will allow you to go through LinkedIn and harvest uh, emails and build lists uh, from your contacts. A lot of times you're connected on LinkedIn, uh, but maybe an email is a little bit more effective. If you are uh, uh, a contact uh, or they're they're connected with you, uh, you can get their email, but it's a, a horribly manual process. Reply's got a sort of efficient way to do that. If you want to build out your own systems or you just want to track some data, uh, I love Airtable. It's kind of the Swiss Army knife of data management, uh, kind of a juiced up Excel document. <laughs> Google Drive and Docs uh, is essential as a salesperson. I'm always building a checklist, little pieces of content. Uh, and the thing that I love about Google Drive and Doc is I can simply share it uh, as a public and I can put that link uh, inside of an email or inside of a text message. And, and I can distribute it there without having to kind of manage a PDF or a piece of sales collateral. A lot of us have sales collateral uh, that's sort of uh, electronic. Uh, Google Docs, I can make all that sales collateral. I can make a presentation, I can make a spreadsheet, I can make a doc, uh, and then I can make it shareable as a link. Uh, and so I use that for super quick. Uh, or if somebody says, hey, you know, do you have anything around this? What would you do for that? I can quickly build up a piece of sales collateral. Uh, it can look really sharp and then send it out by a link. Uh, and then Zoom and Google Meeting uh, is super, super essential. Questions, questions, questions. You guys are super quiet out there. I'm gonna kind of leave it on this and then I'm gonna spend the next couple minutes if there are any questions. Customer service, obviously something that needs to be uh, kind of built out as well. Um, we kind of talk about some expectations in here. You'll get this document. I think it's really important, personal appearance. We had to <laughs> everybody see the uh, newscaster that didn't have any pants on, you know, so we don't want that sort of thing. So there needs to be some expectations. Any other questions? What part of this, uh, just to kind of as an exit poll, if nothing else, um, what part of this presentation was the most useful? Was it actually setting up your home office? Was it converting your sales to virtual? Um, or we didn't really get into customer service too much, but there's some redundancy in there, customer service. Uh, what of this was the most useful to you? Also, as we close out, if there's anything you'd like to learn about in the future, I would love uh, to know uh, the topics that you're kind of really focused on, or maybe you're trying to figure out right now. Excellent, Jonathan, glad you enjoyed it. Basic data websites. Oh, Bob, are you talking about where you can actually get data from? Software tools. Yep, that's always a good discussion. One of one of my favorite places to play around. Ah, good dit. Good, Bob. I want to make sure I got it all handled. Okay, guys, um, that's coming up on the hour. I'm going to send a replay of this out. Um, I'm going to send this document out as well. Um, you're welcome to, to email me, ask me any questions. Uh, we do these uh, just about every Friday. Um, so I'd love to have you back again. Uh, but if you have any questions after all this goes out, uh, hit me up by email. It's uh, simply bill.rice at kaleidico.com. And I'd love to, to help you out. All right, everyone have a great weekend. We'll see you next week, hopefully.